Yesterday, I talked about a comic book that is just absolutely deplorable. There's nothing redeeming about Dark Crisis, Young Justice, number six, or any of the other issues in that series. Today, I'm going to talk about something a lot more complicated. Batman, One Bad Day, Mr. Freeze from Jerry Duggan and artist Matteo Scalera. There is a lot about this comic book that is absolutely fantastic. The art is phenomenal. The story is engaging. The character voices are actually really good. Jerry Duggan almost knocks this one out of the park, but he does something with Mr. Freeze that I don't know that a lot of people are going to be able to forgive him for if you're a fan of Batman and the Mr. Freeze character. Mr. Freeze is the ultimate sympathetic villain in the DC Comics universe. He's basically their version of Magneto, a character driven to do bad things, but with such a tragic backstory that you can actually understand why he's doing it. Sometimes he comes across as a little bit too sympathetic for my taste, but you can certainly understand what drives Mr. Freeze. It's his love for his wife, wanting to cure her of her illness, bring her back by his side, and live life out like they were supposed to, happily ever after. He never got that because of tragic circumstances, and that's the Mr. Freeze that we've known for a very long time. Some people have different interpretations, but Jerry Duggan's interpretation of Mr. Freeze and his motivations for freezing his wife, Nora, are vastly different than anything we've ever seen before. I know some people are going to say, well, these One Bad Day stories, they're not really in continuity. But these One Bad Day stories, technically, from what DC Comics have told us, are supposed to be game changers for these villains. They're supposed to be the One Bad Day story for all of these characters. Why you need a One Bad Day story for Two-Face? When Batman The Long Halloween exists, I don't really know. I think it's just basically a cold-hearted cash grab that did not get out of the gate very strong because they chose to do Tom King's Batman One Bad Day, The Riddler, first. And it's, that, 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 book, that book is just absolutely awful, if you ask me. But this one has a lot going for it. Let's talk about why a lot of people are not going to like his interpretation of the origin story of Mr. Freeze himself. For the most part, at the beginning, it is the quintessential Mr. Freeze that we know. It's the origin story that we're all very familiar with. A scientist that's too dedicated to his work. His wife gets sick. He's desperate to cure her in a last-ditch effort to buy them more time. He ends up freezing her. There's a tragic accident involving the GCPD, and he becomes Mr. Freeze because of this. All kind of by the book right there out the gate. But Batman starts investigating because he believes Mr. Freeze, because of his motivations, actually can be redeemed, unlike a lot of other villains. And Batman ends up going and visiting one of Nora's old friends in a past life. And he asked her about how her disease took her too soon. This is what her friend says. Yeah, about Victor. He was her first disease. He wouldn't even let her see her friends at the end. My wife and I went, and so did Nora's other friends from work. You know what he said to us? She doesn't need you now. She's been robbed of a dignified end. Tragically, ironic given her living will, Batman asks, she had a living will, it was never submitted. To which her old friend says, I'm sure that madman destroyed it. Because Mr. Freeze wasn't driven over the edge because of a love of his wife and being so desperate to cure her that he would actually turn to crime, which really wasn't in his nature before that. Sure, he was a workaholic. Yes, he could have been a better husband, but he wasn't exactly a bad guy until now. This is what Jerry Duggan has to say about why Mr. Freeze has his wife still under ice. Because I like it this way. You know what I enjoy about our relationship now? We don't fight anymore. She's not out spending my money, and I don't sit alone in an empty house wondering who she's out with or when she'll be home all the time. Mr. Freeze, the most sympathetic villain in the history of DC Comics, is no longer motivated by love. He's motivated by control. He's a control freak. He didn't like his wife going out there and having friends and going to dinner with them. He didn't like his wife going out and spending all of his money. He felt like it was a personal insult, and so he's frozen her, kept her under ice. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense that he's worked so hard trying to cure her over the years, because it turns out in Jerry Duggan's mind that Mr. Freeze was just a really shitty husband that needed his wife to be barefoot and pregnant rather than being a strong, independent woman. Does this feel like Mr. Freeze to you? Because it certainly doesn't feel like Mr. Freeze to me. This story is absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of stuff in here to like. But once you get to the motivations of Mr. Freeze, I do think it actually breaks the issue itself. You can't really recommend it at that point. I don't know what Jerry Duggan was thinking. I don't know what DC Comics editorial were thinking on this story. This is supposed to be a game changer for the character. Take him in a new direction. Make him feel more dangerous than he was before. Kind of like what happened with Alan Moore and the Joker. But that's not what Jerry Duggan is doing here. 
What an enormous mistake on the part of DC Comics and Jerry Duggan. He had a chance to make an impact with the most sympathetic villain in the DC Comics universe, co-starring the most popular hero in the DC Comics universe, and he drops the ball with his own hubris because he doesn't understand the character or he can't fathom the fact that there's a villain out there that actually loved his wife and love could motivate a villain to actually do bad things. Just a terrible decision on the part of Jerry Duggan. What ruins what is otherwise a pretty good comic book. There's only one other thing in here that I don't think makes a whole lot of sense. I guess maybe because Dick Grayson is really young in this story. He's presented as being like eight or nine years old. Obviously at the beginning of his team up with Batman. Batman and Robin apprehend this murderer. Batman says this is one of the irredeemable ones. One of the ones that can't be fixed. And Dick Grayson can't believe it. How could Batman say that? But I personally have never thought of Batman as a character out there trying to rehabilitate and fix criminals. He's out there trying to save people, trying to stop murderers and rapists. The most violent criminals in the world are the ones that Batman deals with. But if you look at the story, this is kind of how Batman comes to the epiphany that Mr. Freeze really is the only one that can be redeemed. So I guess it plays a part in the story, but maybe Jerry Duggan doesn't understand the character or perhaps he's trying to display just how naive Dick Grayson is at this point in his life. It doesn't feel like that's exactly where he's going. But me personally, I've never thought that about the character. I'd definitely like to hear from you guys. Do you think Batman is out there stopping criminals so he can rehabilitate them? I don't think that at all. I think he's just trying to save people. The big standout in this comic book, which does have very good writing, a good pace to it, and a compelling story, is the art from Matteo Scalera. He knows how to illustrate him some Batman. Look at the wonderful use of Shadow and the character of Batman in Gotham City in this page right here. This is absolutely beautiful. Matteo Scalera fits perfectly into these stories that are kind of throwback issues in a bygone era, and I really like that. That is absolutely the standout feature. If you love great Batman comic book art, and you can get over what Jerry Duggan has to say about Mr. Freeze. I think a lot of people are actually going to like this a lot because the art is so spectacular. And the story, like I said, other than that, really is compelling, especially when you do get to the stuff with Mr. Freeze and Nora, and she's on her deathbed. It's really sad stuff. It's really well pulled off. And I think this probably should have been the motivation for Mr. Freeze, not his misogyny and wanting to keep his wife frozen so he could control her because he or she's on her deathbed. She doesn't want to be saved at this point. She wants Dr. Freeze to go out there and use his brain for good, to go and save the world. She says, are you hearing me, Victor? It's time we talk about what comes next. He says, no, science is so close to helping you. You just need a bridge. She says, no, no. This apparently is when her friends show up and he tells them to leave. And she says, who was it? Just some nurses. I was hoping my friends could never mind. Promise me, Victor, use that big brain to change the world. Don't fixate on losing me. Leave all this trouble behind and spread your wings. It's better to have loved and lost. Like I said, the voices really are spot on. The voice of Dick Grayson as a young kid is really, really powerful and strong in this comic book. It feels like a Batman comic. He might be a little bit too verbose for my taste. But other than that, just really strong stuff. But the question is, the question I have for you, can you get over his characterization of Mr. Freeze and his motivation for keeping his wife, Nora, frozen because it's misogyny. It's because he wants to control her. He was tired of her having friends. He was tired of her spending his money. Didn't feel like the character whatsoever. Are you willing to forgive DC Comics and Jerry Duggan for a pretty terrible take on Mr. Freeze in about three or four pages, but otherwise is a very good Batman Mr. Freeze cobble? Certainly not one bad day S. Certainly not a game changer for the character other than maybe destroying it if they decide to run with that in the future of the character. Otherwise, I think it's a strong effort. I definitely want to hear from you guys. This One Bad Day series has been really up and down, really uneven. I don't think they've accomplished once what they set out to accomplish in any of these comic books. Most of these characters have already had their One Bad Day moment. The worst being the Tom King Riddler story. Is absolutely terrible. This is yet another bastardization of a classic DC Comics character by the hands of Tom King. If you haven't seen this, definitely check it out. I made it just for you. If it's not here, there's also a link in the video description.